Mr. Chairman, before I begin, I think all of us on the Judiciary Committee and every member of Congress must first address the outrageous foreign policy and national security disaster that's taken place over the weekend. The American people awoke this morning to yet another incomprehensible and utterly avoidable disaster created by the obviously incompetent Biden administration. The president is clearly in far over his head. After 20 years, trillions of dollars and thousands of American lives were spent standing up Afghanistan's army and government. The country's been ceded back to the Taliban in less than a week to a disastrously executed Biden drawdown. Afghans who've helped the United States over the years are being killed along with their families. People are hanging onto the side of B-52s as they evacuate for fear of their lives under Taliban rule. There should be top to bottom accountability at the Pentagon and within the administration for this disaster. That this stunning failure has been met with silence from President Biden calls into serious question his ability to carry out his duties as commander in chief. While he vacations at Camp David, America's stature in the world has just taken another massive step backwards. It is shameful and it is dangerous. And I hope every one of us will acknowledge that publicly. The American people deserve and demand better. This morning, we engage, even as all that's going on, in what is now our sixth hearing this subcommittee has held on voting rights since April. So let's go through these motions once again. Today, we'll have more discussion on legislative reforms to the VRA. At the subcommittee's prior hearings, our witnesses have already discussed ad nauseum many of the proposed reforms. As recently as two weeks ago, we discussed the overly broad and constitutionally sub suspect practice-based coverage provision that would require every state and political subdivision to pre-clear certain election practices. In June, the subcommittee held a hearing on other proposed changes to the VRA, such as provisions that would create a new extraordinary legal standard for courts to grant injunctive relief in VRA-related actions and impose burdensome reporting requirements on states and localities. And today, our Democrat colleagues would like to continue the conversation about how the the federal government and partisan bureaucrats here in D.C. should exert control over state election laws. In 1965, Congress passed the Voting Rights Act to overcome state resistance and barriers that prevented minorities from exercising their right, the, the right that's guaranteed to vote by the 15th Amendment. And as we've discussed at all the prior hearings in 2013, the Supreme Court held in Shelby County v. Holder that continuing to require states to pre-clear election law changes based upon conduct from decades ago was an unconstitutional invasion of state sovereignty. Specifically, the court noted that, quote, the conditions that originally justified these measures no longer characterize voting in the covered jurisdictions, unquote. And we should applaud the court's decision in Shelby County because it acknowledges and recognizes we have come a long, long way from one of the most shameful chapters in this country's history. However, instead of recognizing that progress this country's made, our Democrat colleagues seek to propagate legislation that would amount to an unconstitutional federal power grab over local election laws. For example, H.R. 4, as passed last Congress, would create a new Section 4B coverage formula. That new formula would allow a court to retain jurisdiction over a state or a political subdivision for 10 years if a certain amount of voting rights violations have occurred any time in the previous 25 years. Under that new coverage formula, a state or political subdivision can rack up voting rights violations without a finding of intentional uh, discrimination at all. Instead, settlement agreements and consent decrees, in addition to court orders and objections by the attorney general, will suffice to trigger federal coverage. This new triggering mechanism is troubling, considering the politicization and partisan polarization of the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. As one of our witnesses today, Hans von Spakovsky, has noted, the department has, quote, a history of filing unwarranted objections under Section 5 based on its bias in favor of liberal advocacy groups. H.R. 4's new coverage formula will incentivize advocacy groups to file a plethora of objections, creating meritless litigation to trigger coverage. One of our prior Republican witnesses noted the formula, quote, creates something akin to the heckler's veto for the loudest private interest groups, unquote. But liberal advocacy groups and Democrats want federal bureaucrats to have control over election administration. Now it appears states will not even be able to readopt voting procedures that were in place before the pandemic without input from the Justice Department. On July 28th, the DOJ issued new guidance regarding state efforts to remove temporary emergency voting procedures implemented last year during the unprecedented pandemic. The Biden administration's new guidance bizarrely suggests that states may not return to voting laws and procedures that existed before the pandemic 
saying those laws and procedures may not, quote, be presumptively lawful, unquote. In 2020, state and local governments were tasked with safely administering elections during a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. It was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Many states adopted temporary voting procedures to reduce public health risks, despite prominent health officials saying that in-person voting was safe. With this new guidance, the department takes the position that these temporary emergency measures, some of which were passed without their state's legislators' approval in a blatantly unconstitutional violation of Article II, are the new baseline from which to judge compliance with the VRA. This is contrary to Congress's intention in passing the legislation and a clear example of the left weaponizing the DOJ to do its bidding. I implore the department and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to remember, it is easier for eligible Americans to vote than ever before in America's history. I look forward to the hearing and these witnesses today will rehash the same territory once again. Thank you and I yield back.